I have never been to a bookstore that only sells romances, so this whole vlog is just me freaking out over going to a bookstore that's just like that. I also end up organizing my bookshelves and I do a little book haul and lots of bookish fun in this vlog. So hope you guys will stay a while. Be sure to subscribe because I upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and I hope you guys enjoy. Welcome to another video with lots of book shopping, you guys are always like so supportive whenever I go to bookstores You're like yes get the books and I love that because I don't think that I will ever stop book shopping someone actually said once they're like reading as a hobby and shopping for books is also a hobby and I feel like I have both hobbies but we are in Chicago and we're gonna go to um a bookstore that has only romance books and I cannot wait because I've never been to a bookstore like that I feel like Romance books in the past were kind of like looked down upon like you were looked at as you like maybe weren't as smart or you weren't as like I don't know literary like you know what I mean like you just weren't looked at as like a true reader if you weren't reading like the classics and I don't know like more highbrow literature and I love that people are really celebrating like romances and just like giving space to people who love romances so I'm gonna go take up space in this bookstore and um we'll see what it's like I think it's black owned and I think the owner is actually like around my age she's like fairly younger um I think she owns it with her mom and it just opened up they actually have Hannah Bodem Young I think that's her name she wrote uh, out on a limb she's gonna go and like speak at this bookstore and like have like a little discussion thing on the 20th of October I think so they're already like getting events going like I'm just so excited so let's head there and see what books you can find you feel like summer days to me warm tender sunny rays I hope that we are meant to be you say nothing at all when we meet, yet somehow I know your history. Oh, come what may, I'm ready. Picture frames, lavender and pain. They all live here within this romance. I guess. done in the bookstore and I cannot tell you how good of an experience that was like I think it's truly one of the best book experiences I've ever had they also have a outdoor sitting area which is like really cool they have a little sign right there um, it kind of just tells you about like when they were founded they just opened three weeks ago which is wild but I got so many books let me just like show you guys I'm not gonna like actually take them out right now but I want to show you guys like what I ended up getting like just them out so these are all the books that I got and I ended up getting an arc which I'm so excited about um, I cannot wait until I get to read it and then this is the little thing I was telling you about it tells you everything about the bookstore and it's just like really cute the whole bookstore is just like such a vibe and I really enjoyed it I really wish that we had bookstores like this in Springfield like I miss the experience of going to bookstores when I don't know about a lot of the books and I feel like in Barnes or just like even other independent bookstores a lot of the books that people share are books that I've like already read or or are already popular so then you don't really get to have the true book reading experience so anyway I'll show you guys the books when we get back I think my Uber's here um, but I'm really excited to show you guys what I got yesterday and I've actually decided that I want to move around in my bookshelf if you guys have been here for a while you guys probably know that I'm like building a new bookshelf but it's not done yet um, but I want to move around my large bookshelf for like a couple reasons also gonna show you guys the books that I got in a second um, I just wanted to like make my breakfast and then I'm gonna show you guys the books that I got after I move around my bookshelf well I've decided I want to move the bookshelf around because 
there are some books on here that I've read and some books that I haven't read and I kind of want to like separate the books that I haven't have and haven't read if you guys watch my physical TBR like video how long my physical TBR is is literally wild so I want to like make them more front and center and all of these books up here I've read and then books up at the top I've read and I kind of keep them like out of sight more but I want this to not be like in my line of sight because I feel like when I go to pick a book I am like still naturally gravitating towards books that I have already read and I feel like if I move these to maybe my coffee table section it would be easier for me to like grab books I haven't read. So I think what I'm going to do is move these books over to where the um like other books that I've read are and then put the books that I've read down here because I don't really look down here very often. This is one of like my favorite things in our house. It's like such a cute little coffee table so I will link this below if you guys want to pick it up but um I don't look down here much and I haven't read any of these books and so I want these to kind of be like front and center. So I'm going to move all of these now and then just like hopefully it looks pretty good whenever I put it up there. I know it's nothing new. It's so good to see you We do this every day And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight this turned out if you guys want to know we actually turned our entryway like closet where you like put coats into a bookshelf because we literally don't ever use like an entryway closet like even when people bring coats like they don't ever put it in the closet so it's just wasted space and I just love it so I like how this turned out now that I've changed things around it's just like a really I don't know the vibes are vibing and I'm really loving it I also love how this turned out underneath the coffee table I think it looks really good and now it's time for me to open up my little bag it is quite literally falling apart but I ended up getting six books yesterday and I was actually telling my husband that I got six books and he was like six books how did you get six books in like 30 45 minutes and I was like you know what just call it a talent because for some reason I always end up picking out a ton of books and I just cannot leave a book behind if I find one that looks like really good. Um, all of these are romance and I did end up getting some diverse reads which I'm really excited about. The bookstore was really really like special like very special if you are in Chicago you have to go the owners were so nice I ended up getting an arc which was really nice so I'll show you guys the arc first so the arc is actually a book that has already been released but they're re-releasing it with a new cover and it is the Christmas Fix by Lucy Score and it says she's going to save Christmas just to spite him. On the back it says single dad and town manager Noah Yates has always taken his responsibilities seriously but when a late season hurricane turns Mary Connecticut into a disaster he's left scrambling to pick up the pieces of the home he loves. That is until renovation expert and reality TV star Catalina King shows up with a camera crew and a bunch Budget big enough to put the town back together. It seems like the perfect Christmas gift, but Noah isn't so sure. He doesn't want a celebrity diva capitalizing on their tragedy or filling his daughter's head with visions of glitz and glam. The last time Kat was in town, after all, she caused nothing but trouble. Kat is used to being underestimated, but Noah has an uncanny knack for getting under her skin. They can't be in the, just in, the room, in a room together without rubbing each other the wrong way, except for that time in a dark alley where the a dark alley where the rubbing was just right. 
Can these enemies work together to pull off a Christmas miracle or will their fighting leave them both on the naughty list? I'm excited for this. I feel like I just am getting into the Christmas mood. In my next video that comes out on uh, Thursday, I'm actually gonna show you guys the 20 books I wanna read in October. And I added in two Christmas reads because I want to like start reading Christmas books just to get me into the mood and also have books to recommend for you guys. So I'll probably give a recommendation video in November and I already have some I read last year but I want to like read some new ones so you guys can have like newer Christmas books to read. The another book that I got is Where You Belong by Nicole Baker. Now so many of these books were books that I literally have never heard of before and this was one of them. Um, on the back it says, Gabriel, I'm in desperate need of a nanny for summer. When my client suggests his daughter's best friend, I know I'm in no position to be picky. When she walks through the door, I'm stunned to her beauty. She's a bombshell and I'm so screwed. I do my best to keep my distance, but it's impossible to do when I'm so drawn to her. All it takes is one admission from her for me to lose control. Alexis, after I score this summer gig for my friend's dad, I figure it will be an easy way to bide my time until I figure out what I want to do with my life. As soon as I meet my boss, I know nothing about this summer it will be easy. He's sexy, mysterious, and impossibly grumpy. One night I have too much to drink and tell and let my little secret spill when we're texting. I'm mortified and I only meant to type it then delete it. When I get home that night he's waiting for me and insists on rectifying my little dilemma. <gasps> ah! That sounds wild. I also got um, this read right here which is a diverse read by uh, Therese Berry, I think that's how you say the name. Um, and it says, Single Dads Club. The cover is so cute. And it says, Rowan Quinn knows fatherhood is a role he doesn't want to take on until he unexpectedly finds himself a single dad. He uproots his perfectly constructed life to move to a tight-knit coastal community in South Africa, where, with the help of his grandmother, Rowan has a shot at giving his son the family he's never had. Once footloose and fancy free, former heiress Delilah Huntington is now a waitress in Sugarbush. Bay, determined to build a better life and a better self. So when she meets introverted Rowan, she makes it her personal mission to conduct him, to induct him into the town's circle of single dads to give him the support he needs. The more Delilah lends her help to an out of his depth Rowan, the more Rowan begins to realize that family is what you make it. And just maybe Delilah could be part of his. Ah, this looks like it's gonna be so cute. Oh my God. Uh, another book I got is actually a really thick one. It's called Wait For It by Mariana Zapata. I've never read anything from Mariana Zapata, but so many of you guys have said her books are good. Also, the words in these books are really, really large, which makes me not so nervous to read this, but you guys know how I feel about long romance books. Like I, this book is 662 pages, like 662 pages for a romance. Like what's going on here you know like I I'm not sure if I like it but I had to read a book by this author because so many of you guys have said her books are good and on the back it says if anyone has ever said if anyone ever said being an adult was easy they hadn't been one long enough Diana Casillas can admit it. She doesn't know what the heck she's doing half the time. How she's made it through the last two years of her life without killing anyone is nothing short of a miracle. Being a grown up wasn't supposed to be so hard. With a new house, two little boys she inherited the most painful possible way, a giant dog, a job she usually loves, and more than enough family and friends, and sh she has almost everything she could ever ask for, except for a boyfriend or a husband. But who needs either of those? Interesting. I heard that Mariana Zapata's books are a slow burn. Like literally you don't get to the romance until like the, like them really getting to like be together until like the very end. I don't know if I've read a slow burn that's like that much of a slow burn. So we'll see how I feel about that. Not sure. I also got Nothing Feels Better by Britt Benson and I just really like the cover of this one. Um, on the back it says, Jess Hernandez has infiltrated my life. The gorgeous, exciting man who or Jesse Hernandez has infiltrated my life, the gorgeous, exciting man who hangs out next door, who happens to be younger than me, and in college, and heading to medical school in just a few short months. It started innocently enough, the occasional run-in, a few chance encounters, an offer to babysit, and an offer for more. But then it snowballed. Now I only know two things for certain. One, for the first time in my entire life, I'm not an afterthought. And two, this will end very, very badly. My kids, my job, his future, it's all at risk. Jesse Hernandez has infiltrated my life, and if I'm not careful, we will all be in tatters when he leaves. Literally, I am 
like just so excited to read this. I don't know why. Um, and then the last book that I picked up is Where Time Stands Still by Annis Perkins. And it says, is, is love better to lose than to never have it all? In the back it says, 26 year old Ren Lawson knows she will soon forget who she is. With early familiar Alzheimer's disease written in her genes, it's a fact she's wrapped her whole life around. To indulge in friends or romance is a risk for everyone around her. One she's not keen on taking. Throwing herself into her work as a lawyer is the only thing she can do. Aaron Scott Perez was happy with his quiet life in Boston, but when a doctor's mistake leaves his father unable to run his Christmas tree farm, Aaron has no choice but to move back to the small Vermont town he used to call home. He never saw himself managing the business, but since it's so dear to his father, Aaron has given up everything to do it. To get his father the justice he deserves, he hires none other than Rin. She's emotionally blunted and secretive, but her kindness and competency provide something his family hasn't felt for a long time. Hope. So much so that Aaron starts to think the life he didn't want might not be so bad when she's around, yet Ren cannot let him in, too haunted by her future. As the two get closer and the lines become blurred, Ren and Aaron find themselves at a crossroads, but their attraction is unyielding and together they must decide what risks are worth taking. And if love is better to lose than to never have at all. Wow, wow, wow. I loved all of these books so much. I had to bring them home. I didn't end up going to another bookstore because literally six books is enough. Like you guys saw my bookshelf. I have so many books that I've read that I haven't read. And if you guys want to see like my whole physical TBR that I haven't read, uh, I will link it below so you guys can watch. But so far this year, I've actually read 121 books. So I'm like reading a ton. I feel like by the end of the year, I'll read close to probably 200. I don't think I'll get to 200, but I'll be pretty close because I read between like 16 to 20 books a month like somewhere in there so uh yeah adding six books i think is fine <laughs> i don't know at least that's what i'm telling myself because i read so much um but yeah be on the lookout for my next video coming on thursday because there's new videos on tuesdays thursdays and saturdays and on thursday i'll give you guys the little like october tbr there's lots of good books in there and i hope you guys just really enjoy it so i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys